Hello Houdiners! What we're going to see in this video is how to use a grayscale map to change geometry. It will be the equivalent of a displacement map on a render time, but actually change the geometry in the viewport. So we had here our grid, and of course we had to increase the amount and the resolution of the amount of points, so we can have some definition. And that will be the equivalent of tessellation during render time for the displacement. And of course, now we have to transfer an attribute for our map for each one of the individual points. You're going to use this map as a grayscale, and as you see, uh, we have the, the peaks as in, in black. That means we're going to have to invert this later on, but don't worry. So, you put an attribute for a map, and you see it's getting the color attribute on this. So, just pick our map there, the displacement. And I already can see that each point got the color from that uh, from that map. And we're going to use the vex operator, and I'm also going to use the later on the Rango node so we can code and we can compare. So if the VOP, if you dive in, you have here the points, and of course if you connect points to point, nothing going to change. Is the input the same as output? But we put a displacement along the normal. So we want all those pointing up along the normals. And the amount is going to be the color. But as you can see, color is a vector, amount is a float. So we have to drop in the middle a vector from a uh, vector to float node. And we can get just one channel of the color. And when we do it, boom, everything is explode. Because remember, it's getting a zero, a zero to one value, so it is displaced as a zero to one. So I see it's almost like a box since our grid is one to one. So we can scale it down. Use this uh, this parameter to scale it down. And as we mentioned before, we have to invert this with a minus one. You could promote this attribute, this parameter, and use this uh, as outside for you manipulate it. But if you say, well, actually I want to code. So let's write our two lines of code to get the same solution. It's always good to, to know those things. You never know when you have to use it. So we want to get the position. So I use the at p variable. And we're going to use, instead of repeating, the position plus the, the color value used is plus equal, that equivalent of at p equal to at p plus. So I want just one way to make it shorter. So it's plus the color value, you just want one uh, component of the color, you use the r. And of course, we have to use just one component that says the y x, because you just want to move it up. Otherwise, everything collapses to one point. Well, and we have the same thing we had before, that everything moved to a value of 1. So we had to create now our amount, our scale. So it just creates this parameter using the float parameter, the, the variable we want, equal, and we create a channel on this node. It's very easy. You just put the ch and choose the name of the, the channel you want. And now we can use the scale as a multiplier. I'm going to put it here uh, a minus just to invert, but of course you could have to use this there on the channel. And uh, click on the side so it create the, the parameter down there. Of course it's a zero, so everything's down to nothing. But if you put a point 0.1, I think it was the same we put it there. Uh, or zero 0.1 actually. And you see, you have a very similar uh, solution. And we can invert this if we don't want to be consistent. So you control with the minus, you're going to be on the channel itself, not on the, on the expression. And we can compare the VAX with the, the, the VOP. Well, because in the back, background, they're doing exactly the same. But here you have your, your mesh has been deformed. You can use this as a modeling tool. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.